Then the next class is the beta blockers. So, beta blockers. So, there are many types of beta blockers. We've got the tinolol, uh, bisoprolol, carvedilol, nadudolol, sotalol. So, there are many lol drugs which are the beta blockers. But before I do explain the difference between them, it's very important to understand physiologically uh, some uh, concepts. So basically we've got some neurotransmitters which are like adrenaline and noradrenaline and they can act in, um, in basically uh, adrenal receptors. So there are alpha 1 adrenal receptors and alpha 2 and then the beta receptors, beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 and basically these neurotransmitters can act in these receptors and the beta blockers, they will block the, that action on the beta 1, beta 2 and beta 2 receptors so uh, let's talk about the beta blockers itself um, basically the beta blockers when they act on the heart they block the beta 1 receptors uh, so the beta 1 they are on the heart the beta 2 they can be found on the smooth muscle and the, also on the lungs and the beta 3 can f be found on fat cells so when we are talking about the mechanism of action of the beta blockers we are talking about the beta one. So when they block it on the heart, there is like a decreased heart rate, so decreased uh, cardiac output, so decreased blood pressure. That's a mechanism of action. Uh, and we'll have different classes, different types of beta blockers. We'll have the beta blockers that are cardioselective, so they only block on, on the heart, they are selective for the beta one receptors whilst we have some that are non-cardioselective uh, so that means they will act not only on the beta 1 but on the beta 2 and also block the beta 3 uh, so that's the main, the first thing to understand so the cardioselective we have atinolol as an example and bisoprolol whilst the non-cardioselective will act in any beta blockers so one example is propanolol and then they will have other side effects apart from diminishing the arthritis. so when they act on the smooth muscle, the non cardioselective, they can cause vasoconstriction and also if they act on the lungs they can uh, cause bronchoconstriction So if we have a patient with asthma or COPD, we don't want this to happen, so we'll give them preferably a cardioselective beta blocker. Uh, whilst, for example, if we have a patient with anxiety, uh, then the propanolol is quite good because it can reduce the heart rate and the tremors all over the body, so there is indication to give um, propanolol. Other side effects with the beta blockers are coldness of the extremities because there is vasoconstriction, so that's a possible side effect. And some beta blockers are more likely to cause like vivid dreams, nightmares, because they can easily cross the nervous system and so they can uh, do it. So the more water soluble uh, beta blockers do not cause these as much. So they are atinolol, nadulol, sotalol, for example. And last thing to bear in mind about the beta blockers uh, is that they should not be uh, abruptly discontinued because if they are, then some uh, cardiovascular uh, um, symptoms may appear. People may even like suffer uh, from a heart attack and uh, uh, or they can uh, develop like an unstable angina. So when we throwing the uh, beta blockers, that should be always uh, supervised by the doctor. And then another class is diuretics. So, diuretics. There are four types of diuretics. There are the teazide diuretics. There are the loop diuretics. 
there are the potassium sparing diuretics and the aldosterone antagonists. All right. So, in general terms, the way the diuretics uh, act is on the kidneys, they make us getting rid of the salts, especially potassium, and then water follows it, so we get rid of water and potassium, so we decrease our blood volume and our blood pressure also decreases. So, less water, less salts, less blood volume, lower blood pressure. Alright, so we have different types of diuretics. Uh, the first one, as I said, is the thiazides, and one example is bendroflum thiazide. And basically, uh, with these thiazides, they uh, inhibit the reabsorption of sodium and water in the distal convoluted tubule, uh, so we get rid of them, the water, the salt, uh, and so our blood pressure decreases. Then the loop diuretics, they are the most potent diuretics, so the most potent ones, and one example is furosemide, and there is also gumetanide. So basically, the furosemide, they are really potent uh, diuretics that just get rid of all the water and all the salt, sodium, potassium, magnesium, um, chloride, all of them, and then they are not like normally a first line for hypertension treatment, they, but they may be considered for uh, heart failure, just to get rid of the oedema that is uh, present in uh, uh, normal conditions in patients with heart failure. Then we have the potassium sparing and the um, aldosterone antagonists, which get rid of the water and sodium, but they keep potassium. Uh, so Potassium sparing example is amyloride, and aldosterone antagonist example is um, spironolactone. Alright, so in terms of uh, side effect profiles, the, these two they keep the potassium, so one possible side effect is hyperkalemia, so that should be kept in mind. But sometimes, because uh, they keep the potassium. They can be associated with the first two because the first two get rid of the potassium. Kind of a counterbalance system. So these two can be associated with TSI and loop diuretics. Then when it comes to thiazides, it's really important to uh, bear in mind that they can, uh, they are quite dismetabolizant, so they can increase uh, the glucose. So they are not really advisable for patients with diabetes. They can increase also the uric acid. So they should be avoided by patients with gout. And lastly, can also increase our lipids in the blood, including the triglycerides. So the thiazides, they have uh, quite a few problems that should be kept in mind uh, before prescribing them. Whilst the furosemide, the main problem is because, as I said, it's a potent diuretic, it gets rid of all the salts, so it can cause like a hyper, hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, um, they can also lower our magnesium levels, so people may feel more tired, fatigue, they can have cramps as well when they are on loop diuretics, so those are the main side effects with the loop diuretics. Alright, uh, and then our last class is the A1 uh, receptor antagonists. So, A1 receptor antagonists. And these are pretty quick to explain. So basically, as the name indicates, they um, block the action uh, in the alpha-1 receptors, so they are uh, antagonize the effect in the alpha-1 receptors, uh, and especially in the peripheral vasculature. Peripheral vasculature. So, as consequence, we'll have uh, vasodilation, 
will decrease systemic vascular resistance, so the blood pressure also decreases. So the main side effect to bear in mind with alpha-1 receptor antagonists is hypotension because it can, there is vasodilation, so hypotension, extreme hypotension may happen, so if there are symptoms of fainting or anything, it might be related to it. And the last thing to say is that alpha-1 receptor antagonists are normally like a last resource, so if th those four are tried, if the AC inhibitors, ARBs, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, diuretics, they are all tried and still is not enough, sometimes we can associate one alpha-1 receptor antagonist, but that's like a last resource. Alright, so that's pretty much it in terms of the main antihypertensive drugs. This might be quite a lot to take on, so maybe I would advise you just to rewatch this video as many times as you need and take your uh, notes. Um, as you may know, this video is part of the Easy Peasy Pharmacology book that I wrote. Uh, it's available on ebook uh, version or paper uh, version like this one on Amazon. I will link it down below as well if you want to have a look at it. And I hope that helps in your studies. Thank you so much. Bye.